I am so glad I got that over with. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to my opinion slash review for it. Before I actually get into the review, I just want to apologize for going so long without providing you guys with any type of video, whether that be a review, reaction, or whatever else. I think it's been like two and a half weeks, almost three weeks, and I'm going to try my best. No, I promise that I will not go that long without sharing another video with you guys. But anyway, back to the review. No, but not anyway. Thank you for your patience. I really do appreciate it. Now, moving on to the view, uh, review, this is for uh, it based off the Stephen King novel that came out way back in the day. And if you've seen my previous videos, you know I'm a scary cat and I do not do well with scary movies. But at the same time, when I do watch movies and talk about them, um, I don't want to be biased. And I try to cover everything. So I got to cover the horror stuff, the horror stuff, too. Now, if you saw my reaction to the trailer that came out a couple of months ago, um, go ahead and check that out. There'll be a link to the dis uh, link to that in the description box. It's pretty funny to me. Um, after I uploaded it on YouTube, I will go back and watch it just a few times, you know, just to you know get a good laugh out of myself. But um, going into this movie, um, I was super duper scared, um, like terrified, just like man. You know, I don't want to see this, but I want to see it. I had an, a, a, ch a chance to go see it Wednesday, but I passed it up. Well, then I was going to go see it Thursday night uh, when it's released to the public. You know, but I made excuses, you know, because I was just scared. Didn't have anybody to go with. But Friday, today, the time I'm recording this, I was like, you know, if it, I need to go ahead and see it. And that's what I did. Now, um, like I said, this is based off the Stephen King novel that came out, you know, classic Stephen King that came out uh, a while ago. And um, I did not read the book. And this is also uh, like a remake of the 1990 mini TV series that came out in 1990. And that was like a two part series. And I didn't watch that thing all the way through. Um, I did see kind of like bits and pieces here. And I do remember it being creepy as hell. And part one focusing on the uh, children in this movie um, while they're ch children. And the second part, part two, uh, tackling them when they're adults. So going into this, I did not know how they were going to, uh, you know, tell the story and, you know, portray the cast. But I will say uh, I was going to say for the most part, but not for the whole movie. This really does focus on uh, the children. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the very beginning of the movie, because that's how it starts. And uh, from the very beginning it's eerie and it's creepy. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, you know, what did I get myself into? And they're playing this music and it's a beautiful score. Um, you know, look that up. Um, you know, the, the guy that did that deserves um, a lot of credit, but it really did um, a great. The film really did a great job of making you um, feel for the characters and relate to them, but not in the beginning. But just as far as you, you know, just feeling sorry for the characters and caring about what they care about. They did that right off the bat. And um, one thing that really gets to me is when I see pure innocence taking a, uh, that's been taken advantage of. And that's exactly how this film hits you upside of the head in the very beginning to where everything is nice and pleasant. And they're just taking little things like a little, uh, um, you know, a boat that's made out of paper folded up. And, you know, it has a lot of sentimental value. And um, as you know, as you see the trailer in the as you see the trailer for this movie, when that boat is, you know, going on the ground in the water from all the rain, you know, that's towards the beginning of the film. And um, it just really just, you know, like really opens your eyes when that film is over. You're like, wow, you know, this is what I'm in for. I was not expecting this. Um, you know, the film was really pulling on your heartstrings at the very beginning and then just flipped it like an hourglass just on the other side and made everything rush down to the bottom. And I'm just like, that's how I felt in the beginning. Like, oh, my gosh, you know, if this is how the first five minutes of the movie is starting, I don't know uh, how long I would be able to last. And um, it's not too long. The movie comes in, I think, at about two hours and 12 minutes. Um, I was kind of hoping for like a 90 minute or, you know, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute. But it, it comes in a little over two hours and it could have been a little bit shorter, uh, maybe 10 minutes shorter. But that's uh, not a big deal there. And um, the, the what I want to talk about the most is is just how surprised I am about the way that I feel coming out of the movie. You know, going into this, like I've said a thousand times that I was scared. I didn't walk out of this movie 
scared, terrified, or running away. I walked out entertained, but for the most part, I walked out saying to myself, man, I really have not cared about a group of characters that much in a, you know, a very, very long time. I mean, this movie is being marketed and sold as a horror thriller film, but this is more of a drama, and that makes the movie um, even, you know, much better. And, I mean, you can have the cheap, you know, Blumhouse movie um, that are being produced that in all the cheap stuff that comes out, you know, January and February, the toilet bowl season of the movie uh, of the movie season. And those movies can be made for like three million, five million, no more than 10 million dollars. WWE or whatever the World uh, Wrestling Federation is called today. They make these cheap movies with these characters that are completely forgettable and the whole thing is predictable and that's not it at all they really did their homework this movie didn't even feel like a movie this felt just like i was witnessing um random events from these children in this town while they're going through a horrific live action nightmare um it just didn't feel like a movie usually when you're watching a horror movie you can say to yourself you know screaming at the th- at, at screaming at the screen why are you doing this don't go there go this way don't no duck get out the way you know oh why are they doing like this or and, and someone might say hey well they don't know that they're in a horror movie i didn't feel like that at all this really didn't feel like a movie this really just felt like me just watching the uh watching the events of children in the summertime and you know just watching these events play out in their lives and it is just like a horrific nightmare and i cared about all of them uh to the t there was not one character in this movie um that i did not care for i care for them all and all the characters are different they are multi-dimensional they have a lot of things going for themselves and they're also very funny too Uh, not only this is a drama and you feel for the characters but you also laugh at all of them and you're able to relate to all of them too and i ca- i caught myself reminiscing a lot when i was in the theater watching this movie because it does take place when they're in junior high and there were just so many different easter eggs and nuances around just random things that reminded me of when i was in junior high they had to do a cat uh uh, a cast if someone broke their arm or leg and you have to sign that or end of the year yearbooks when people you know you know get signed you know a nice gesture in your yearbook and there were just so many things that reminded me of you know my childhood and I, it got me smiling i mean but i saw the horror spot when i was watching these characters uh mostly boys and this one girl uh, named beverly engaging with each other back you know back and forth i was sitting there smiling like you know oh my gosh you know like i I feel like i went to school with these kids so you know it's a great drama you care about the characters you know they're making you laugh uh it's not even jokes they're just a bunch of funny moments and funny moments in movies are always better than jokes jokes are like jokes are you can kind of just forced in funny moments feel natural and are honest and true and there was a ton of that in the in the movie now um what everybody probably wants to know for the most part is this movie scary did it scare the hell out of you am i gonna have have nightmares i actually don't think i am i'm very surprised the movie was scary but it wasn't scary at the same time because usually like i think i said this at the very beginning of this review when i'm watching a scary movie you know usually things always happen at nighttime you know uh, it's nighttime and someone is about to go to bed and they hear the noise and then the music starts building up and then you just you know they're creeping around the corner and then something pops out and it's a jump scare and then the scene is over with and then you're on to the next day and you can relax no there's nothing like that because this scary ass pennywise clown it doesn't matter if it's you know dawn morning night evening middle of the night whatever you know he will terrorize you um everywhere and um the movie not the movie but the character pennywise the clown he's played by bill skarsgård and you know of course i've heard that name before you know he's been in this and that i'm not too familiar with his work and before this movie came out when all the trailers and still images and posters and whatnot were being released there was a lot of talk or i heard it uh in my comment sections here in forums here and there that people were you know not so impressed with the makeup job or just thought that his face was not you know dangerous enough and look evil enough and scary enough and um it looked very scary to me um especially with those eyes um i was nervous you know i think i'll stay away from clowns for a while but i don't really understand why everybody is complaining that wasn't a complaint for me 
Um, as you see in the trailers, when Pennywise is down in the sewer and kind of, you know, playing with the little, um, I forgot the little boy's name, with the boat. And he has his rain jacket on. The way his eyes, you know, popped up in that scene right there was like, you know, really chilling. It set chills, you know, down my spine. It's like, oh my gosh, you know. And they kind of threw in like a sound effect like he's hiding behind it. <laughs> you know, you just see the eyes like, oh, okay. Very nice intro to Pennywise the Clown right there because it, it did scare me. But uh, Skarsgård, he did a great job as Pennywise. And early on, his imagery is very innocent and childlike. But then again, towards the end of the film, it does turn into more sinister demonic that does, uh, you know, creep the hell out of you. But um, I said the movie is scary and not scary. Like, it's not jump scare. It's not jump scare scary. It's, it's nothing like that. Um, you know it's coming. Um, and the, the horror and the terror like lingers on and just builds upon itself and just, you know, takes itself until the next level. So you're like, okay, when can I stop looking at this image right here? Can you please change and go to the next scene? And they're just, and the way they did it was very creative because you, you really don't know where the line stops or starts where things start to be real and illusion. I mean, where where does the that line between illusion and reality is very blurry to where you don't know if it himself is crazy. Pennywise, the characters on screen, the characters they're involved with are me, myself. And that's like that's a blessing and a curse because I did like it because I did like the unpredictable nature of the movie. But at the same time, when that line is very blurry, the film doesn't really set the rules of the universe up for itself too well to where you're like, you don't know what's going on. You don't really know how to defeat Pennywise until the very end or you really don't know his origin. Like I said, it's a, you know, it's, it's a blessing and a praise. It's a pro and a con because it does give you that curiosity and you are intrigued and wanting to know what exactly is going on. But at the same time, if the film ends and you don't get all those questions answered for you, I don't want to say that it's frustrating because it's not, that wouldn't be the right word. But now that I'm thinking about it and as I was watching the movie, I was asking myself, I wonder when they're going to reveal this information and they really don't do it. They do, they do leave it kind of vague. But on another positive note, I do feel like there will be a sequel to this movie that will address all that. If it does not, I will be very um, disappointed. Um, but I am actually looking forward to the sequel um, because this had great characters. It had a great score. I cared about them. I was laughing about them. They had a creepy um, ass clown that um, just needed to die. Um, but at the same time, you know, I have to pull back a little bit on how great the film is because the line between reality and illusion was just too blurry for me to where, you know, I, there was just too many times I was saying, okay, is this character actually in pain right now? Or are they actually dying? Or is this whole thing in an illusion? And there was one scene in particular. So I was like, okay, I don't really know what's going on because, if something is a dream or reality, you can you can write it off as, you know, you not knowing um, because it's a dream or reality. Nobody is living or dying. You know, it, you can just, you know, I don't know if that character was imagining that or if it really became true. But when things in that scene become tangible and I'll just say I, I don't want to spoil it for it, I'll just say that there was a bathroom scene with a, with a bunch of blood and in this scene when things become tangible. It changed the whole dynamic of the scene to, and, and it leaves me confused because I'm saying to myself, OK, I can understand if uh, this set of characters is imagining things and this set of characters over here isn't. But then when it becomes tangible and I really don't want to spoil it for you. And when you see the scene, you'll know what I mean when I say tangible. It's like, OK, wait a minute. Like if, if they are able to do this and actually touch and feel what is being perceived as an imagination or something like that, or a hallucination, you know, why are they able to get, why are they able to get physical with it? And then this party is, and this party isn't, it was only one scene, but Hey, um, I have to bring it up. Another gripe I had is, um, I always like when characters are being, you know, in times of peril and danger and you're trying to save the day and save your life or get away from safety. I love smart characters. And for the most part, all the characters in this movie were very smart and asking all the right questions at all the right times. I mean, at one point you see in the trailers, there is a clown in a sewer. And even if they're a little kid, I mean, isn't somebody going to be like, hey, what are you doing in the sewer? You know, so little things like that, I really do appreciate. 
and you know they were on the they were on point with that in this movie but there were some times to where one character would do something like incredibly dumb like separate yourself from the group i'm like why would you separate yourself from the group you know what is going on right now you just saw something tragic happen 10 seconds ago but you want to run away from the group but that was just one little small scene and then towards the end like i kind of like i was kind of just like why are y'all not running or why are y'all not participating you know attack etc 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 but you know these are just small gripes um the movie you know i thought i was gonna be real scared and terrified and going like this and you know oh my god ah! but it, it was nothing like that and i but you know um i really did enjoy the movie i really do recommend it and i think everyone should see it if i had to rate it out of a one out of ten i would give it an eight out of ten yes an eight out of ten but guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen it? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give me this thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's perfectly fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up since you're watching this video on youtube go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel so become one of my subscribers to get all the content that i have to provide in the past present and the future yes go ahead and click that subscribe button and while you're at it go ahead and click the bell as well so you can be notified when i do make uploads you can go to my website check me out there i do have written reviews and you can bookmark it and guys also look me up on social media and i really made it very easy for you guys because you're looking at it on your screen right now and there's also links down below in the description box but guys again i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for it and go ahead, don't forget to subscribe. Help me reach my first milestone of 1,000 subscribers. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.